In times of isolation, more and more are looking up. Let me show you a hobby that exceeds our horizons and makes us wonder what's beyond. Hello everybody, my name is Tim. Tonight I will use this camera and telescope to take an image of deep space. This hobby is called astrophotography. Join me and look up to the sky. Right now in my backyard I'm in a kind of weird spot. The Big Dipper is already on its way out. I took my fair share of M51 and M101. The next constellation the entire northern hemisphere is craving for is Cygnus. From this backyard Cygnus will rise above the tree in about one month in the beginning of the night. The only objects I have right now are maybe some higher targets in Cepheus, closer to Polaris. Or if I'm lucky tonight, I don't know yet, the constellation Hercules. Because Hercules is earlier than Cygnus and earlier than Lyra. My target is M13, the great globular cluster in Hercules. I think with this configuration it will be a great image. Thanks to Dylan O'Donnell and the Bintel calculator I now know that this configuration is undersampling just a tiny bit, slight undersampling it said, and I think it will be good enough. Typically when it comes to targets in astrophotography the clusters are on the smaller side, but I'm still sure that with only 450 millimeters that this will be a great image. In the past few weeks a lot of new people arrived to this channel, so let me introduce this equipment I'm shooting with tonight. In this hobby exposures of about 5 minutes are nothing special. And since the sky is moving slowly, the base of every setup is the equatorial mount. This is a basic beginner mount, it's the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro. I control this mount via the small hand controller in the bottom left and with a small cable over my laptop. On this mount are sitting three major things. We have the imaging camera, this is a dedicated astronomy camera. It's a ZWOSI294. This camera has an internal cooling chip. It can cool down to minus 35 degrees below ambient temperature. So this will run at about minus 15 tonight. Connecting to the main telescope is a small filter drawer. So this filter will soon be a light pollution filter because I'm shooting in a bottle 5 to 6 over here. It's a pretty strong light pollution filter, but I hope I will get some star colors in tonight because the star colors are pretty important when shooting globular clusters. The imaging scope is a quadruplet. Many telescopes are referred to by the number of lenses they have, so these are four lenses. It's the Omegon APO 71Q, but even with four lenses to the other arrow, the field distortion should be gone, but sadly this telescope wasn't very collimated from the company I bought it, so... I don't know how to do that myself, but it'll work. On top of this scope is a small guide scope running along. So this guide scope and the small guide camera in the back there is used for auto guiding to improve the overall tracking of the mount. On the front there, pointing north to Polaris, you can see the Pole Master. In the beginning of the setup, this mount needs to be polar aligned. And with this small camera up there, the polar alignment will be dead on. And therefore the overall sharpness of the image and the auto guiding will be improved a lot. It's not quite dark yet, but I will have to focus now if I want to get anything in this night. So the scope is set up, it's polar line, it's tracking. And let's look to our focusing star, it's in Draco. And I have to shine the light at the telescope in order for you to see anything. And look at the star field. And now the star should be in there. Let's move to PhD. There it is. What's the focus of the star right here? 4.3, that's not good enough in my opinion. I will try to get something better soon. 
I'm always focusing the guide camera as soon as I'm on my object because sometimes the star fields tend to vary from time to time. All right, I will double click this star. I have my custom Batmoth mask here. Careful not to stumble over any cables. And now, with this star resumed in, I will go to the camera tab, select the focus plan, 10 second exposures, looping. I will unlock the focus on the scope. And yes, let's go. Let's see what the first focus is like. I will press pause just to have a little bit more time to look at it. Well, this is way too far off. The scope is now very close to pointing at the edge of the house. Hmm. Let me move the camera. You can maybe see, no, not quite yet. Let me get this up. There's the beautiful star Vega. Vega Vega, I don't know. Wow, look at the screen right now. Amazing, hang on. And let's rotate it a tiny bit more. I want it to be up there. Right about here, maybe. Let me turn the screen a little bit brighter so you can see something. That's about right. But no, my night vision is shocked. I will turn off live view and solve this image to get the right angle. Alright, close to 180 should be fine. Let's rotate it a tiny bit more. Let's check again. Stop the live view, solve this image. The cluster will appear a tiny bit bigger, perfect, 1.3 degrees, that's okay for me. So now we should see some, at least some galaxies in the long exposures down here. But these long exposures will only be 60 seconds in the case of this cluster. Alright, and now since I've already focused, I need to refocus. Let's start the cooling. I just touched the camera, so I really want to look if the 